Hello, people. This is Lee Cole from the Lee Cole 3 podcast, and James Proctor, like usual, is here. James, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Not bad. You know, we're going to do a, a kind of an interesting story today uh, with Sammy Gavano. Yeah. People are going to say, oh, not another Sammy Gavano. But, you know, Sammy Gavano, he has a lot of things that we could talk about forever. Yeah. And one of them is, uh, so there's been a lot of changes in Sammy's channel lately. And people yeah. have noticed and people don't like the changes. If people remember the old show, the way it started, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. But the guy to put that together is no longer in. He's no longer there, the director. Right. Talk about that a little bit so people know exactly why the show doesn't look like it used to look. Yeah. So a couple of things there. And, and thank you, Lee. What, as we know, lately he's just been doing lives. So he's been doing his lives uh, on Mondays and then he'll do basically clips of other, you know, maybe past shows he'll re put out there on YouTube or he'll um, actually take clips of the, the lives. So, you know, it's kind of interesting because, you know, we were told he was going to have all these interviews lined up, like Michael Francis and Bill Leonetti and, and all those. And actually, I wanted to hear that interview with Bill Leonetti. It'd be very interesting. And but, nothing's, he said February. February yep. is over. We're moving into March now. March, yep. So it, it seems like there's a little dis disorganization with his show right now, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. And then, um, interesting, about a week ago, um, you know, Alec Baldwin has a podcast on iHeartRadio. And anyway, I, I ran across a, a podcast uh, where Alec Baldwin was interviewing James Carroll. So for those that don't know who James Carroll is, he's the director of, or he was the director of the Our Thing um podcast that Sandy the Bull did. So those first five seasons, um, you know, I thought especially the first couple of seasons were excellently, were very excellent. They were produced very well. And so, you know, in this interview, I learned a little bit about uh, Mr. Carroll, you know, how he got to uh, be part of Sammy's crew, what his job was, and then, um, you know, kind of what's happened. So how did he get him. to become part of Sammy's crew? Yeah, so when Sammy got out of prison in, in 2017, um, uh, his his family and Sammy they were they were shopping his story. So they wanted uh, Hollywood to do a, a basically a show uh, about his life. They wanted to you know do either a documentary or or like a live uh, episodic uh, show. And anyway, James Carroll was brought in to to actually do a pilot and do uh, a show and then get it shopped with, um, you know, producers in Hollywood. And so, uh, unfortunately, you know, they shopped it around for a couple of years and there wasn't much interest. And again, this was in 2018 when he got out and that was right. before uh, COVID hit. And then in 2020, you know, COVID hits and then Sammy uh, works with James Carroll then to produce our thing. They said, you know, we're not getting anywhere with Hollywood. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do our own um, podcast. And, and our so, thing became very successful, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it, it did. And, you know, he's got uh, 550,000 uh, subscribers. And and so it's it's been, uh, you know, in the anytime you can get you know, even a hundred thousand subscribers. That's a, that's really good. And so, you know, I think Sammy's may be, you know, up there may behind Michael. I think Michael Francis has about a, a little over a million. Yeah, subs. A little over a million. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's definitely been successful. Now Hollywood is, is interested, um, is supposedly, but anyway, Alec Baldwin had this, um, you know, interviewed him and, and, and so, they started working together, you know, and they did the first five seasons. Okay. And now Baldwin asked James Carroll what was going on now. Now, James yeah. Carroll also told a story about uh, Sam, Sammy didn't seem like a, per, a person that had too much empathy. And right. uh, uh, he didn't really seem like he cared about things and people getting hurt. Explain right. to me why James Carroll said this. Yeah. And so that was... So I thought it was interesting. So Alec Baldwin asked, uh, you know, when you when you talk to Sammy, do you feel that he has regrets in his life with with his past? And 
and it was interesting to me that James Carroll said that that Sammy has no remorse on what happened with any of the 19 murders. So I thought that was uh, very telling of, of who Sammy is as a person. Yep. And uh, wasn't he driving and something happened with a, with a bicyclist? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and this is, this is just more of, of an example of, of Sammy, you know, being petty, but also where Sammy can't let things go. So basically there was a altercation with a bicyclist when, um, Sammy had taken, um, James Carroll to dinner in Arizona and they were coming back and anyway, and Sammy was driving and he almost hits this, uh, bicyclist. And then, you know, the, the, the guy on the bicycles upset and tells Sammy F you. And then Sammy yells back at the bicyclist, the same thing. And, and then, you know, finally drives off. I mean, James Carroll didn't know what the hell was going on thinking, you know, who knows what Sammy's going to do, but you know, it ended peacefully, but uh, you know, Sammy couldn't let it go. He was just talking about the rest of the evening and how this, um, sea sucker would not, uh, you know, so it was okay if, to do that. Imagine if he came across Sammy Gravano 30 years ago. Yes, exactly. And started yelling at him, <laughs> uh, you know, and it's, yeah. it's just one of those, things. but you know, and, you know, is there anything else you found fascinating about that? He's out. He, he was a director. He put that thing together. He helped Sammy yeah. get off his feet. But as yeah. we know, Sammy's not too loyal to the people around him. And we're going to yeah. that's why we're going to go into the Frank Fiella. Right. Bracket. But yeah, and that's that's. Uh, yeah. And the only thing I wanted to say just about the James Carroll um, interview, it, it just seems that Sammy's on must have been unhappy because one of the things that, like I said, we've heard is that he wants to re-edit the, the first few, those first five seasons of our thing. Uh, you know, he said there was some factual, maybe dates missing or whatever. And, and so, but also if you look back at, at the last couple of years with Sammy and his crew, you know, besides Gerard, his son, you know, Gerard's definitely his biggest influence, but, you know, his crew has turned over, you know, multiple times in, you know, just two years. And now he has a woman that didn't even know what the book Murder Machine was. <laughs> Sammy didn't yeah. know what the book was. Yeah. And uh, she goes, Sammy, I have no idea. And this was a recent one. Mm -hmm. So now he has people that are in this line of business that know nothing about the mob. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. And he's he's given that up with the people that he's pushing away, I take it. Right, right. Okay, and, and we're going to go into another part of this, and we're going to do the Frank Fiella, and uh, um, mm -hmm. and let me put him up here. And this is sure. interesting. I want because we're talking about Sammy's loyalty to people. Mm -hmm. I want to explain to the people the hit crew that was on this and what happened, and what happened to the hit crew that did this with Sammy when we come to mm -hmm. loyalty. Yeah, and uh, the reason why he killed Frank Fiella. What do you think? You know, so let's put him up. And as everybody knows, this is Frank Fiella, and he was killed. Uh, explain how he was killed. Yeah, so this was in uh, 1982, and and so uh, I know that probably most of you heard the story, but you know this guy Frank Fiala, he's from Czechoslovakia, you know, very eccentric uh, guy, and anyway, um, you know, a drug dealer, you know, has a lot of money, you know, came to the states, you know, is in as an adult, and anyway, the. The guy um, wants to buy the the Plaza Suites. You know, he wants to buy the, you know, this nightclub. And so, you know, there was the issue. They had a, a birthday party, all that type of stuff, which, um, you know, Sammy's talked about. But, you know, there was um, there was just a lot of issues between um, Fiala and, and Sammy and his crew. In fact, um, Michael DeBat confronted Fiala once. Um, and Michael DeBat had DeBatt, a newsy DeBatt, submachine gun. And Mike DeBat was the doorman at that time, right? Uh, yes, he was. He worked mm -hmm. the door for the club for Sammy. Yeah. And uh, we all know who Michael DeBat is, and we'll get into how he died. Right. He was a he was an athlete. He was considered a very strong guy. Yes. And he was a bouncer at the club. Yes, he was. Right. And uh, and so uh, Frank Fiala threatened his life with a machine gun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Didn't Sammy say in his uh, thing that it was him that he threatened? 
Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. But, but we don't actually sure threaten was, Michael DeBat. Yeah. yeah, it was Michael DeBat, and Sammy said it was him. Sammy put himself right in the middle of the story. Yeah. You, know, uh, you walked in there like Rambo. But anyway, when this happened, Sammy was pissed. Yeah. Okay, so so I'm going to read this. This story is from 19... This is the, exactly what happened. This story yeah. is from 1982. It's a very short story, and there's no yeah. Italian names in it where I'm going to get them all screwed up. So let me... Get, <laughs> yeah. let me uh, uh, add this to the stream. Yeah. And this is, uh, this story is uh, 40 years old. And this is the original, uh, this is the UPA ar archives. And it says a millionaire disco owner was killed by a ski mask gunman who pumped one bullet into each of the victim's eyes and mouth in front of a horrified patrons outside a Brooklyn club. Another gunman wearing a ski mask pinned Frank Fiala, 37, to the ground while his companion methodically shot the Czechoslovakian native in each eye on, on Sunday, a police spokesman said. The gunman finished the job by shooting the victim in the mouth. I don't know how he finished the job. I think the first time he hit him in the eye, he was probably yeah. shooting. <laughs> yeah. The shooting occurred at 2 a.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern time in front of the Plaza Suite Disco. Uh, several dozen patrons were outside the club waiting to get in when the shooting occurred. Fiala had gone to the club in a Rolls Royce and was headed for the front entrance when two gunmen jumped him, the police said. He was pronounced dead at Coney Island Hospital. Police said Fiala, who owned two small airplanes and several luxury cars, including a Rolls Royce and a Cadillac limousine, had signed an agreement recently to purchase the disco. At that time, they didn't know who the agreement was with, did they? Right. No, they didn't. If the police arrived, a search of Fiala's private back room office turned up a large quantity of pornographic materials, police said. Uh, investigators also said Fiala was a frequent visitor to Plato's retreat, where a patron's encouraged to engage in sex. And back in those days, Plato's retreat in New York was very big. Uh, Fiala was said to have immigrated to the United States from Czechoslovakia several years ago with a little bit of money. He began working as an apprentice in Brooklyn firm that manufactures machine parts and eventually became its owner. Fiala was estranged from his wife and two children who are residents in Virginia Beach. Okay, so that's the article right there. Let me get that down. Kind of funny because when you when they write this article, they have no idea what happened. Right, exactly. Okay. And uh, so let's uh, talk about what happened. Yeah, I mean, you know, was, uh, part of it was that, you know, I started thinking about the story. You know, I'd heard it several times from Sammy and everything. And then one of the interesting items about this is, or here's my opinion of the whole thing. Let's start there. I think it was a an actual setup. I, I believe that Sammy never was planning on giving the um, club to Fiala. And so Sammy, Sammy already got from Fiala $100,000, right? Yes, exactly. There was a down payment. They hadn't even went to the um, attorneys yet, but there was a $100,000 down payment. And then it was going to be the property was only worth 200,000, but uh, he was willing to pay a million for it. But it was going to be done a, a little bit unusual. So there was a hundred thousand dollar down payment, and then uh, another two hundred fifty thousand dollars that would be paid at closing. And so that was um, on the table. But then a lot of people say that Sammy wanted to kill him before the closing, right? Yes, exactly. And so there was, and there's another reason for it. Besides that, he was owed or was going to get six hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of gold bars. And so, you know, it, I know that this guy Fiala had started moving in. He had already um, had his own office. They said that he already had the safe there. And so, you know, what I don't know is that it's possible that the gold bars were already in the safe, just waiting for the sale. I'm not sure what happened, but what we do know is that Sammy got a hundred thousand dollars and you know, he had no intention in actually um, completing that transaction. And not only that, Sammy Gravano was about to do an unsanctioned hit because Fiala was an associate yeah. of the Gambino's families. He he basically yeah. had declared with 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 uh, um, with uh, what's his name? Paul Paul Castellano. With Paul, yeah. right? With Paul Castellano, yeah. and right. he didn't clear it with Castellano. He no, just he 
Yeah, he did not do it. He killed. So he, you know, they have Fiala killed, and then and let's show the hit. The, well, the hit team yeah. uh, was uh, at the door. Mm -hmm. Was Michael the Bat, and yep. that was and that was a ruse. He was at the door, and he was just going to pretend he was bouncing there, but he mm -hmm. was going to stay at the door. Right. One of the main shooters was Louis Mulatto, mm -hmm. right? Good and, friend. And we, of his. we all know what Louis, and we'll talk about what happens to Louis. Yep. Then another. Then another person was uh, Nicholas Marmondo, right? Yep, Nicky Cowboy. Nicky Cowboy. Uh, and uh, then you had uh, let's see, you had Ed Garofalo, mm -hmm. Huck Carbonaro. Mm -hmm. Joey Peruta, uh, they mm -hmm. called him uh, Sammy's Luca Brazzi. Yeah. And Joey D'Angelo, who eventually became a big rat himself. Yep, Stymie's son. Yep. Well, anyway, out of this hit crew, the reason we bring this up, because three people in that hit crew are murdered. Yep. But let's say the hits. Okay, so so Molito jumps out. They shoot him. Uh, it's Molito's one of the main shooters. Uh, mm -hmm. Who else is the main shooter there, if you uh, remember? Yeah, so you had you had Melito, and so um, and the bats, uh, the bats was at yeah. the door. Michael DeBat, yeah, was and, there. And too, when the shots yeah. went off, the bats yelled, "Everybody down! Everybody down!" As right. a, like, like a ruse, a diversion. A ruse, yeah. So everybody mm -hmm. laid down, and uh, that's what happened there. And yeah, uh, Nick, exactly. And Nicholas Romando was there, and uh, mm -hmm. and and. Unfortunately, and Mermando, Melito, they were the main mm -hmm. shooters. Were is that correct? Yeah, they were. Yep. And then Joseph D'Angelo was um, was there as well. And so, you know, he had a gun as well and and shot at him. Okay. And and, and so it doesn't end there though. It's like okay, the, the shooting's done. And I'll tell you the balls of uh, of Michael DeBats. Yeah. He stayed there and waited for the police to come, and he he sat there for questions and everything. Yeah, yeah, because he they thought he was just a yeah, he was a bouncer. You he know, was a he, bouncer. They didn't they didn't say oh this yeah. guy was a was a member of the uh, yeah of the Gambino family. They, right, they had no idea at that time. So this is on yeah. a sanctioned hit, right? You're right. It it is, and, and Sammy gets uh, nervous. Sammy gets nervous, and um, and so a couple of things on that. So he, they, like you said, it was an unsanctioned hit, and. You know, what I don't know is, you know, Tato was still his capo, his his boss, and he didn't go to Tato that I know of. We never hear about Tato in this time frame, so I don't know what's going on with him. But, you know, he he basically um, decided to, you know, kind of hide, you know, go on the land for about three weeks, see if things would settle down. And and then, you know, all of his supporters you know the, the the six people that we're talking about um they said you know they were concerned for for sammy sammy was scared that paul was going to whack him over this unsanctioned murder and so uh the bat and all the others said sammy will load up we're ready and so they were willing to go to war for sammy gravano they were willing to go to war against the gambino family to protect uh sammy so these very men that were willing to protect Sammy, Sammy eventually betrayed all within the next few years. Now, do you? Yeah. And the funny thing is, Sammy called them all drug addicts and nuts. Yeah. Uh, the ones that he decided to take out. And, you know, let's start. So uh, he takes out uh, Nicky Cowboy. For, uh, and uh, yeah. Nick, now, Nicky Cowboy wasn't a druggie. OK. Right. Uh, that never came up. But he went to John Gotti. And uh, mm -hmm. he basically said he was out of control. He 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 was a renegade. He told yeah. John Gotti, right? Uh, he, he didn't want to. Uh, he didn't want to be court, part of the crew no more. He went yeah. and told John Gotti that he was trying to get his own crew together. Mm -hmm. and so they got him to come down to uh, Tally's, which was also it was not that was owned by. Uh, That's Gravano had Tally's as well. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they got him to come in, and do uh, you know what happened at that point? Yep. You tell us. Oh, Nicky Cowboy. Yeah, he was uh, basically was was shot by, you know, at the, you know, he went there to the bar and, and got, he was shot there inside the club. 
inside of, of, of you know, right there. So, yeah. Was, and, was then, and then after that, um, he decides to take out the bats. <laughs> yep, Michael the bat. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know how that hit went down? Yeah, they they said that he had um, was on drugs and 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 that was why they had to uh, get rid of him. And he was a bartender there. Yeah, he was a bartender there. And and so what happened there with the. With the bats, he was a bartender there, so they made it look like he was robbed. And yeah, exactly. They made made it look like he had gotten robbed, and and so, yeah, just just awful. So it seems like at this point, Sammy's taking on his crew, ain't it? Because Sammy's saying that yeah. Michael the bat's a drug addict. His mm -hmm. wife got a his wife got a hold of him and said, "Can you help Mikey? He, he's on drugs." And Sammy says, "Yeah, right. I'll, him. I'll right. shoot him." <laughs> You know, and uh, and then you know, then and we also have uh, another guy from the hit, Louis Molito, Molito that he yep. took out, and yep. Molito and, was his best friend. Yep, and he is also a, a made guy, and so yep, he was. Um, you know, and that's what was just unbelievable because uh, his wife and family uh, considered, um, you know, Sammy is like godfather to the kids and everything. And I think that the bats was definitely acting strange because they said said he be he was full of paranoia and stuff. But you know, if Sammy's your partner or your friend, I think it's normal to be kind of maybe he was correct to have uh, uh, all this uh, stuff going on in his mind. People said that he was uh, thinking things were going to happen to him. Things did happen to him, so maybe he right. Was Right. And then, you know, with Melito, what was, you know, he had been best friends with Sammy for a long time. I know there was a, a big um, controversy. Uh, you know, Melito wasn't happy when Sammy named, uh, you know, Lou Bellario as captain of his, of the old crew. You know, Melito thought he would get the, 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 the job, but um, no, he went to Lou and Lou was more of a coffee boy. That's something that even uh, if you listen to the podcast, that um, you know RJ and and Scar Mikey Scar's doing you know they've talked about that several times. So anyway, and, and Louis's wife said that he didn't have this drug addiction like Sammy said. No, mm -mm, he didn't. No. He didn't have that. He, but you know Sammy didn't feel that he was loyal. He felt that he was trying to. He went to Paul was trying. I'm sorry, went to uh, John and was saying that uh, you know he is a Castellano loyalist and all that stuff and. They're saying that Melito was uh, being defiant, was complaining, and so. So in uh, one breath he's saying, he, in one breath yeah. he's saying that Melito is uh, not loyal, but in another breath he's saying that they were willing to fight with him if they had to protect him if Castellano decided to hit him. Yeah, and, right. And so Melito, and then he was lured into a meeting. And at the social club, so you had Sammy, Gene Gotti, I think Lou Valario was there, and uh, John Corniglia. And so Corniglia sneaks up behind Melito and shot, shoots him in the back of the head. And the body, and the body of his good friend disappears forever. Yep. You know the other two bodies he left out. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Nicky Cowboy, they threw him in the street. Yep. And. and uh, um, with um and, and with, Michael, um, Mike DeBat, yeah, they thought it was a robbery. You know, they right. even you know made it look like they had the cash register was emptied, emptied, and all that type of stuff. So they thought it was a you know some sort of robbery. So yeah. So and the main reason we brought this up today is because we're talking about Sammy Gravano when it comes to loyalty. Yes. Uh, he had no loyalty when he decided to kill. A man uh, committed an unsanctioned hit. Right. He had no loyalty to these men because he, and this is one of the things John Gotti was complaining about. Right. He went to John Gotti and said, These guys are drug addicts. They're not being loyal. Right. So John Gotti said, Okay, take them out. Right. And uh, toward the end there, John Gotti felt like this, a lot of this stuff w wasn't true. Right. Exactly. You know, and and, you know, he had a, you know, Sammy had a killer crew, but Sammy killed half his crew. And Sammy killed, mm -hmm. you know, a couple guys that were stone cold killers. Yeah. And that, and that's what was, uh, and that's what made me think about this. So, you know, you start uh, seeing the, the loyalty that um, 
that these guys had to Sammy that they were willing to go up against the whole Gambino family for him to protect him. And then, you know, Sammy doesn't even, you know, give him a pass, give him a chance, you know. Even John Gotti, you know, gave, uh, you know, Johnson um, a chance. You know, it's just he didn't – he decided to stay in town and, and still, you know, deal drugs and stuff. And that yeah, he was given every John opportunity Gotti. to leave town, and he didn't. Yeah, Willie exactly. Boy Johnson. Willie Boy it. Johnson, yeah, exactly. And, and so – and that guy – testified uh, against John Gotti and it was uh, was known, you know, the he was outed by the prosecutor. And so, you know, and he even gave him a chance and Gravano can't even give his friends a chance that that protected him from, you know, from John, you know, from Paul Castellano and others. So, you know, it's just very unfortunate to, when you look at this story and in these families that lost loved ones uh, because you know sammy just you know it was more important for him to have what he wanted and you know it's almost 17 years and the only reason they find out about what happened with this murder is because sammy's caught yeah and then eventually joey d'angelo becomes a rat yeah uh, two guys that didn't it was huck carbonaro and uh uh is joe joseph peruta who they called luca brazzi yeah and uh those guys you know didn't right out of that crew they were pretty straight and eddie garofalo was uh also his brother-in-law right well if huck you know the thing is sammy would love to uh, take out huck you know he's the guy you know huck was part of the crew that came down to um yes huck Arizona. Down, yes and that was from peter Gotti. yeah sent them down and eventually that cost peter Gotti his freedom Right, and Joey so, D'Angelo, I believe, he's right. one of the guys that testified against him. Yep, exactly. And and then Sammy a year or so ago did this weird fantasy on how he was going to take out Huck and talk to him about his his treachery before you know killing him. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So. just like he was going to take out a bicyclist. Sammy Sammy's like in his <laughs> and he's still playing on taking people out. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot about Sammy. He, you know, he has a lot of fantasies, and he called that one a fantasy because you know he doesn't want to get in trouble for making a threat, even though, you know, but you know he said the same thing about the chin, and you know he 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 has a lot of fantasies, but it seems like to me that there's still a lot of anger, you know, the, it's inside like, of Sammy. It's like it's like the uh, director said, mm -hmm. he has no. Uh, remorse remorse whatsoever i mean there was a there was a 16 year old bill boy alan kaiser that was killed you figure he had remorse for that yeah he up a story about that mm -hmm. uh, he's just a man filled with no remorse and no. uh um it's like i said it reminds me of that movie a ghost when they pull the guy into hell they just grab yeah. him and take him mm -hmm. you know, that, that they're waiting for sammy in hell yes and if there's a heaven and hell we know where mm -hmm. sammy's going yeah, exactly. Uh, especially now because he still hasn't, he doesn't care. Mm -mm. You know, he says this is part of the life, but betraying your friends, yep. your close friends is, is part of, you know, it happens in a mob. Friends get, but but he was taking his friends out for very questionable reasons because he was taking over their businesses too. Yeah, and that's what never made sense to me is that, you know, he gives the excuse that he flipped because uh, John spoke bad about him. He betrayed, he betrayed. Or him. John told him to take the fall. Right, exactly. Right. And, and then, but then what about, you know, that's not Cosa Nostra, he says, but then what about these, uh, these friends that did, you know, that was always there for Sammy and then he and takes Sammy them, took out. them out. You know, yeah. and we understand that's part of the mob, betraying your friends. Yeah. Well, he, he didn't betray them because of any other i feel like when he murdered those three guys he was he wanted to cover up for that murder yeah uh, well he did pay the cop my understanding is also that you know i know it's not talked about much but uh he paid off a detective i know uh, in home uh brooklyn uh detective a homicide detective to sweep that under because he didn't want to be uh looked at for the murder of of Fiala, but he did uh, pay money to get that swept under the rug. 
Okay. Well, we're going to, well, we got 30 minutes and we're going to drop a video and yep. we'll drop this video. But if you have not hit the like and subscribe, please do it. People. It's like I said, 50% of the people that come here have not subscribed yet. And we're getting close to 10,000. Please help us yep. get there. And if you want to help donate to the show, there's three things you could do. You can either send cash apps in to uh, the cash app or PayPal. Mm -hmm. You can also uh, uh, hit the heart and, and, and leave something there. Or you could watch the whole commercial. As much as people don't want to watch the whole commercial, that's how we make our money is with the commercials. Yeah. And so we rely on those. But yeah. anyway, uh, anything you'd like to say before we leave, uh, James? No, no, I just wanted, I was just thought that it'd be, it was just interesting, you know, the story with, with James Carroll, and then, you know, just led us to thinking about what happened with this uh, Fiala hit, because, you know, there was a lot that really tells you about uh, Sammy's Sammy. character, you know. Sammy, he has no character. No, right. Uh, and, and this is what uh, Mikey uh, tries to say, too, Mikey Scars, yeah. and he says it all the time, because the guy yeah. makes up a lot of stories. Right. He doesn't need to make up stories. The guy has an exciting and sad life. I mean, this story yeah. with him hitting uh, Fiala alone is, is is a very exciting story. But the fact of the matter is three of the hitmen mm -hmm. were taken out by Sammy's orders. Yeah, exactly. And two of them were very good friends. Yes. Okay. Okay, James. I'm gonna thank say, you. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And like I said, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe if you have not. And thank you so much.